So it's a big dog midweek pregame show for Purdue and some basketball thrown in. This is Wayne Viner. Bruce Posner, and uh, let's talk about hoops first, huh? Okay. Big news today with the uh, announcement of a mega facility, $36 million uh, facility in planning a performance center for basketball. Long overdue, as we found out today, something that's been bugging both Coach, Coach Turgeon and Freeze a lot. But he was Coach Turgeon was passionate today about it. Oh, yeah, that's as excited, emotional. Explain, explain why. Uh, well, why? Because and we'll show a little bit of the video here. I'm talking about people, his friends, the people who believe in him, raising the money to get this done. So here's Coach Turgeon uh, thanking the, the donors who've already given the $19 million. Um, Harvey's connected. He knows a lot of people. Um, we raise a lot of money for our basketball program, mm -hmm. as it is. We've developed great relationships, something we've talked about for the last four or five years, trying to build this building. We had to be patient as we built coal. And um, we have a group that that are very generous. I think it's because, and he brought this up in that interview, I think you asked him, that he's up against all these schools that have basketball facilities. Now Maryland's going to have a two-court new facility with uh, locker rooms and the kids are going to dress in those new locker rooms and come into x Center through a tunnel but it just it seems like he's been wanting this the whole time he's been here and he's finally going to get it now it's probably still two or three years away right but he emphasized he emphasized that it has been a bit of a detriment to the program because the lack of total access to a basketball court having this share of the facilities with brenda and gymnastics and volleyball and everything else and also, he spoke about how important it is for the other programs. Because now, if volleyball is a big match, they might be able to play it in Xfinity. All right? Or wrestling might be able to be in the main right. arena because he has another place to practice. It's Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301. 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Jackler's Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win, and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. Anyway, what a what a boom it'll be for the program more than anything else. Right. And well, uh, you saw the drawings up close. Impressive. More impressive. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like uh, the Oris, uh, whatever it's called, the center at. Uh, Johns Hopkins on steroids. In other words, much bigger. Had that same kind of look. That like glass look on either side. It's 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 stunning. That's all I can say. Oh, it's, it's stunning. And it, supposedly it's going to be in the parking lot that's there now, directly across from the uh, from the front door. Right. So they'll have some kind of tunnel to walk through. Right. So that little parking lot. Four years. They'll never do it in three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that little parking lot that's in front of Xfinity Center. Uh, will be gone, so a few more parking spots have to go away for the improvement of the university. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. So now on to football. You just heard Coach Loxley talk about the week that was, 48-7 to win over Rutgers, and the week that will be wearing the dark jerseys on the road as Purdue breaks out their you notice he was wearing my shirt here? He, he was, yeah. Right, go ahead. I'm sure that's because he, <laughs> he saw you. Uh, wearing, Quick change. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the only news out of this, Piggy's going to be the starter. They list Josh's day-to-day. -day. But that's good news in my eyes, not because Piggy's starting. But I love Piggy. In fact, I have you and me have had discussions about who should be the starter. But Josh has played well. But I thought Josh was that much longer. They're talking like he could be in reserve to play. That's what they're talking, but we'll, we'll see. What do you think? I think that the coach gives wonderful press conferences. 
Do you uh, think it was a little deceiving? I think the coach, I, I'm not at liberty to say. I think we give great press conferences, but when you get taken off the cart, out, out of the stadium on a cart, you're probably not playing the next week. Most chances you're probably, probably not, not playing probably the next week. Not. So <laughs> is it possible that he's back for Indiana or at Minnesota, which is the two games? It sounds like, listen, it sounds like he's a lot for being back against Indiana. And if not, he'll be out the rest of the year. In other words, it's like it, either he's ready or it's a lot of day to day between yeah. now and then. Right. Well, and if he's that close to playing now, mm-hmm. you know, they might just not play him. Right. On, on I Saturday. think the phrase I'm looking for is a Kremlin cold. He has a Kremlin cold. It happens to be a, a, a injury to his leg. But man, when that happened, it looked like he was done for the year. So if he's if he's ready to go anytime this year, that's good. Yeah. If he's healthy, it's good, and that's yeah. the main thing. Uh, Purdue's another team that's struggling big time. I think they're one in four. Tremendous injury problems. Quarterbacks fact, out. Yeah. The, the one guy that's worth watching, which is Rondell Jones, is out. Is that out? Out. Is it Rondell Moore? Sorry. Not right. Jones. Look, he's been. He's another one that's been day to day for weeks. He's. He's. I don't think he's going to play. Uh, they have trouble at both left tackles. They have defensive line injuries. They are, and they make Maryland look healthy. And Maryland had three guys on that offensive line that weren't starters on day one. And uh, they performed well against Rutgers. In fact, the holes were there, and they did a good job. But can that last? Look, uh, it depends on how good Purdue's defense is. Maryland went from a pure zone blocking scheme to more of a gap block and a little more man concept later in the game. And suddenly, you got runs of 80 yards at 40 yards and 50 yards. So a little bit of change up for the personnel, and the run game comes to life. The other part is, once Piggy starts to be accurate, you actually have to worry that Maryland can complete those passes. So that takes some pressure off the run game. But those 80-yard runs are things of beauty. Yeah, they are. But you know, Pickerel also, he offers that possibility of the run. In other words, Jackson's not a runner. I don't care, you know, in my eyes. Right. You know, Loxley seemed to disagree with me. But, but Once again, uh, they're wonderful press conferences. Well... <laughs> Well, he did. He disagreed yeah. when I kind of insinuated that Pick Rome's a little bit more mobile. Mm-hmm. Don't you think he's more mobile? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It, the, or, Maybe Loxley just doesn't want to say it. But, right. Uh, he's more mobile. You'll see he'll break. He won't get smothered. As uh, readily. As readily. You know, Lamar Jackson is. Okay. In other words, he can escape that rush. Okay. Well, he's right. not quite Lamar Jackson. No, but, it's, but I said ish. Ish. Ish, right. ish is the key word. Right. But, uh, look, this is a big game for many reasons. If Maryland wants, wants to get to six, don't you have to win this game? you got to win this game. You probably have to, for the first time ever in the Big Ten, beat Rutgers, Indiana in the same year. And then you still need either Minnesota or win against Nebraska. Right now, Minnesota's still undefeated, although I'm not sure how good they are. I think you mentioned or somebody mentioned they haven't played anybody. They haven't played anybody. So, but here's the thing with Maryland. I don't really want to look. I got off of looking ahead no. after Penn State. Just win the game you're going to play. No, but here, here's the thing, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you, you play everybody you're supposed to, and you have to get to six wins. And it's kind of like the Ravens are three and two right now, and everybody says, well, who have they beaten? You know, I mean, a crippled Steelers team. Three wins or three wins. Three wins or three wins. That's same with what are the Terps? Three right. wins. Mm-hmm. So and, and for the Redskins, zero wins or zero wins. Right. So and the Nationals, two wins. They need three wins, and yeah. they're you know, and they're home free. Right.